So unless you are from way into the future and watching this, at the moment there's an app called Pokemon Go which has become increasingly popular. And from this I thought why not just build an animated Pokeball completely with CSS. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this series. So everything's going to be pure CSS. We're going to be introducing some things as well that you may not have heard of, like native CSS variables, which are really exciting. We're going to be using the calc function. And of course, we're going to look at animating this as well. So we're going to be building up some keyframes uh, and using CSS's animation features. So regardless of whether you actually want to build a Pokeball or not, we're going to look at some things that might help you out in front end development. So let's jump over and start to build this out. So we are going to start out with the styling, obviously, and we will get to the animation shortly after that. Now, the key thing here and the reason that we're using native CSS variables is because we want to be able to change, say, the size of the border and have that reflect the inner border just here as well around this center. Now, I'm going to be using this for reference just because I like the colors, just a less saturated red. And you can see here that the border width here is the same size as this border here so that's the kind of thing that we're going for and of course we'll deal with the inner part in a minute and we're going to be using a double border to achieve this now this isn't perfect by any means it's a bit of fun i can't actually get this working properly in firefox and safari uh, it works the animations work but for some reason the center part uh, just isn't positioned correctly and i suspect that's either due to the calc implementation or the uh, variable implementation so if you can go ahead and fix them up in Firefox and Safari, that would be awesome. Go ahead and let me know uh, once you've done that. So let's start from scratch and start to build this out and uh, we'll start to animate it after that. So the first thing I want to do is just create a little container and I'm going to be doing all of my styling in line just on the top of the page here. Of course, feel free to create a separate style sheet. Uh, normally what I would do for this is use a preprocessor like SAS, but of course we're just having a little bit of fun and of course looking at native CSS variables, uh, which are really interesting. So I'm gonna start by creating a container. This is just gonna contain, uh, the whole purpose of this is really just to give a margin on the top. So let's go ahead and do that. And into here we will create our container and while we're at it, we'll create the Pokeball div with a class of Pokeball. So uh, we're going to start with the Pokeball, get the uh, border sorted out, get the background sorted out. We're going to be using a gradient for that. Uh, and then we'll start to fill in the middle pieces as well. So to start this out, then let's create our Pokeball selector. And I want to set box sizing to border box. This just means that the padding and the border don't interfere with the size of this. It will just make it a little bit easier for us later on. And now I'm going to start to define out some native CSS variables that we can use to control the size of this. So I'm going to start by creating one called Pokeball Size, and I'm going to set this to 250 pixels. So you can see here that we define these much like a CSS property. We just use two dashes, uh, and we'll see how we use these in just a bit. And then I want a Pokeball inner size. This is just going to be the size of the inside ring, not the white part, but basically just this dark part here. And then from that, we'll calculate how big this should be because we want this section here to be the same width as the border. So the next thing is just the border size. So Pokeball border size, we want to be able to control that as well. And for now, we'll set this to 10 or 20 pixels. So now let's start to create the border. So this is simple, but we need to introduce a variable here. So we use the var function like this, and then we pass in the variable that we want to use. In this case, it's the border size, and we just carry on normal like we define normal CSS properties. So we have a color just here, which is 262122. That's just like a dark color. And we want to define out a width and a height as well. Obviously, we know that we've already defined this. It is Pokeball size, and we're going to do the same for the height because obviously we want it to be equal. And because this is a rounded shape, we want to set the border radius to 100%. So if we just check this out in the browser, there we go. That's what we've got so far. The last thing I'm just going to do is set the margin to zero auto just so it sits nicely in the middle of the page. Okay, so for the background then, we need to use a gradient. Now that might seem a little bit odd, but what we can actually do is define very harsh gradients. And this means that we basically end up with just three colors uh, in here. 
So we need to define uh, this out here, pretty straightforward. We set a background, we use linear gradient, like so. We define as the first argument the degree that we want it to sit at. So in this case, it will be something like 150 degrees. Of course, you can modify this. And then we have a color in here, which is that red color. So this is BA0C2F. And we start this at 0% like that. So notice when I refresh, nothing happens. We haven't got any gradient going on at the moment. So next, we want to duplicate this down and we want to set this to about 44%. Now, I've already played around with these figures and 44 for the red to end and the black to start uh, works quite nicely. And now, duplicating this down, we need the same color as we used as the border for starting at 44%. So that will start at 44% and it will end at 56%. And then from 56%, we want white. And then to end, naturally, it would be 100%. So this goes from red up to 44%, black from 44 to 56, and then from 56 at 100. And because we have these at the uh, same values, we don't get any actual gradient. We just get a solid color like this. So that's how we're achieving our background. So now that we have this, the last thing I just want to do is set a position of relative and we are done. So we need to think about the center thing here. So this is this black bit just in here. So how would we define this out? Well, rather than creating a new element, we're going to use before and after pseudo elements. And these two elements, one is going to be for this center bit here, and one is going to be for this white thing in here, which we're going to use a double border for. We actually need to uh, create some kind of common styles between these because they're going to share styles. So in this case, we're going to have a pokeball before and pokeball after. Now, when we to find out a pseudo element, it needs to have a space in here within double quotes. We can put text in here, but in our case, we don't need to. And we want to set the border radius to 100% because these two elements are naturally going to need to be rounded. We're going to set a display of block. And most importantly, we have a position of absolute because we need to be able to place this uh, where we want inside of here. And I'm actually going to cut this border size down a little bit as well. There you go. OK, so to start with, we're going to do the pokeball before. So pokeball before. And in here, we need to give a width, a height, the left and top position, and a background color. So let's start just by defining out any background color, just so we can very uh, clearly see where this is positioned. And inside of the main pokeball class here, I want to define a variable which represents the diameter of the inner black circle. So in here, I'm just going to say before diameter, like so. And this is just going to be the inner size variable that we've created here. So of course, we don't need to create another variable for this, but it helps just if we needed to do anything else with this, uh, it's got its own value. So in here, then we want to set the width to before diameter. And likewise, we want to set the height to before diameter. So we now have the following. Now, positioning this is a little bit trickier. And of course, when it comes down to the inner one, because we want the border to be the same here and here, it gets even more tricky. So this is the easy part. We want to set the left and the top values. So how would we work this out? Well, if we think about it, all we need to do is subtract the radius of it to uh, set it into the right position. But for that to work, we need to assume that we have a 50% on the top and left like so. So that will do this. So it's not in the center, but you can see where we're going with this. It's too far across this way and it's too far down. So if we take the radius and subtract it, we end up with a centered circle. So to do this, we use the CSS calc function and we want to from 50 subtract the uh, diameter divided by two, which is the radius. So we're going to say var before diameter divided by two. And we can just duplicate this line down and switch over to left as well. And that is it. We are done. So we now have a centered circle. Now we can just change the background color over. So we're going to grab the border color that we had earlier and set this uh, to the background color for this. And we are done. There we go. Looking good already. Now after, so this is the after pseudo element, this is going to be a little bit trickier. So 
the width of this is going to be the after diameter, which we haven't defined, but there's a little bit more calculation to do here. And I'll try my best to explain this as we go along. So we want an after diameter like so. Now this is going to be the result of the before diameter. So the outer circle that we have in the middle minus the border size multiplied by three. Now I'm going to refer back to this later and we can see why this is working. But essentially it's to do with the border that we're going to give the inner element. So we'll do this now and then uh, we can work out how it works in just a moment. So we're going to take the uh, before diameter, we're going to subtract and we're going to put this into brackets, var, and that is the pokeball border size. And then we are going to uh, t multiply this by three. So we'll come back to this in a minute. What we're really interested in here is the width, the height, which we've just worked out. So we can quickly define this in. So far after diameter, and we can do the same thing for the height as well. And we're just going to give this a background of, let's just say yellow, just so we can see it properly. So there we go. It's just hovering around just up here. So that looks like it would be a good fit for inside of there. And it actually is, but we'll come back to that in a minute. So now the even more difficult part is the left and the top. So we did this before, but now what we want to do is a similar thing. We want to take 50% and we want to subtract. So before we were taking the radius by dividing the diameter by two. Now what we want to do is inside of here, take the diameter. So I'm going to put this in inside of a, another pair of parentheses. So the after diameter divided by two, and we want to then add on the border size. So if that doesn't make sense, let's just do the left, which is going to be the same. And I'll try and explain this. So let's just take a look at it. And you can see that this is just about where we want it. Remember, we haven't defined the border yet, which is going to take up the rest of the space. So if we think about it, we have got a 10 pixel border size. Now for the after diameter, we're taking the before diameter and we're subtracting the border size times three. Now, if we look at defining a border, you'll see how these work. So let's say double and we will take the border size, so pokeball border size, and we will give this a color, let's say blue. See if that, there we go. So in fact, let's make this a little bit more, let's say green maybe, uh, let's zoom in. So you can see here that what's happened is the border here is defined not only on the inside, but the outside as well. So if we just come over to this after pseudo element, pull this, in fact, let's push this over to the side. You can see here that we have the part here. You can see that we've got a 50 by 50 pixel width, but notice we have a 10 pixel border on either side. Now, what we want to do is subtract the border on each side, but then we want room for this around here. So uh, if you think about it, multiply by three because we've got room for it here. But then this outer border, we're going to set to the same color as this, which will create the same size as outside here. So now what we can do is start to set these up. So I'm going to set the background color of this to white, as you can see here. Now, when I set the border color here, which is a double border to black, remember we've got a 10 pixel border just here. We've got 10 pixels times two here. That's why we uh, multiplied the uh, uh, and subtracted three times of it, because we've got one, two, and then three. So hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, build it anyway, and then just play around with it afterwards, uh, play around with the values and you'll see. So I'm going to change the border size and there we go. So let's just zoom out of here and zoom back into this one. Okay, so there is our Pokeball. The good thing now is that if I wanted to say increase the size of the actual Pokeball, nothing really changes. This all keeps up with it. The same with the inner size as well. So if I set that to 100, the middle moves with it. Uh, if I go and change the border size to 20, you can see that this moves in with it as well. So everything stays in place. When I initially built this, I didn't take this into account and it's pretty awkward if you wanna change the size of it or customize it in any way, it's gonna be really difficult to do so. So let's just return it back to say 250, 90, and I think that looks quite nice. Okay, so maybe change that to 80 actually, there we go.
Okay, so on to the animation. What we want to do is create a hook on the uh, Pokeball just here. So we want to say something like Pokeball animated. And this will mean that when we have this class attached, it will actually animate. So the first thing then is just at the top here, I'm gonna say Pokeball animated, and we're gonna set up some basic animation properties, and then we will actually create the keyframes for this animation. So for the animation duration, we want to set this to one second. If you want it to uh, go back and forth faster, then feel free to change this. We want a fill mode in here set to both. We want an iteration count. We want this to be infinite. So iteration count to be infinite. And we want an animation name, but we don't actually have any keyframes just yet. In actual fact, let's just take this down to the bottom here so it's out of the way. So for the keyframes then, we define this using keyframes like this, and then we give it a name. And inside of here, we just say, well, from a percentage to a percentage, what do we want to do to that element? And then in here, this will work. So we can say now animation name shake like so. Now, the only thing with this is I'm not using vendor prefixes as with anything else I'm doing. It will still work in other browsers, but of course, if you want to support older browsers, then you're going to want to change this around. So from, we want to say transform none. So we don't want to transform anything uh, initially. Then we want to define out what we want this to do at the 20% mark. Now we're going to use transform. We're going to translate this 3D like so. We have an X like this. We have a Y and a Z value. And then we want to also rotate it using the rotate 3D function as well. And here we're going to say X, Y, and we are going to say one and minus 10 degrees like so. Now, this is pretty much all we need to do. We're going to just define out 40, 50, 60%, and then we are pretty much done. And we're just gonna change these around a little bit more. So if we just take a look at that now, you can see it just flicks over to the side like so, rotates and also translates, which basically just means to move it across. And uh, that's pretty much it. So this uh, does actually look all right but we want to just add a couple of more uh, percentage marks here. So for 40%, let's just say, well, we want this to be 20%, and then we want it to be a rotation of five degrees. So you can imagine what this would do. It just pulls it uh, at 40% right the way back, so it's just pushing it over there. And then we can just add more just to make this a little bit nicer. So we're gonna say 50%, uh, we will do this again to minus 10%, so it's actually shaking now. It's going back and forward. We're setting uh, minus and positive values here. So let's set this back to minus 10 degrees. There we go, so it's already starting to shake, but we need to uh, just go and define, say one more, just to make it a little bit smoother. 60%, we are going to say we want this to be 10%, and we want this to be five degrees. And then we're gonna say to transform no, and there we go. So we now have a nice shake, pretty smooth. And of course this is gonna be infinite because that is how we set it. And that is pretty much it. Although this is a very silly thing to do, I hope you learned something about, first of all, native CSS variables, which are really exciting. The calc function, if you didn't know uh, what it was about. And of course, just general CSS stuff as well. It's all really in here. Ah, linear gradients as well.